Hey everybody, Alex the Critic here, and it's once again time to rip apart some stupid videos that I found on the internet. This is Cancerous Commentaries. Today, I've got two targets I'm going to be covering, but before I get started, allow me to summarize what's going on for the five or six people who are watching their first video of mine. Back in late October of this year, the video game developer known as Bethesda Softworks released a role-playing video game set in a futuristic science fiction world named Starfield. The game was a massive commercial success, although its critical reception was sharply divided, with much criticism being levied at the game's uninspired level design, restrictive role-playing elements, and bland storytelling. One of the most infamous critiques of the game, however, came from a political commentator named Heel vs. Babyface, also known as Az, who angrily ranted about the game's inclusion of a preferred pronouns option in its character creator during his second live playthrough of the game. Bethesda, there is nothing I love more than to, to, to sit down, comfy chair, turn on my PC, fire up a brand new RPG, uh, uh, lose myself, think, oh my god, just think of this world, just think of all the planets I can visit, all the immersive things that I can get involved with, all the fights, all the relationships, all the people I meet, all the places I go. I'm so excited to go there. And you know, I love nothing more than with all of that laid out in front of me, I love nothing more than to be dragged out at every fucking conceivable opportunity so you can fucking current day us. Sorry, did you want to get immersed in our world? Yeah, well, guess what? Fucking pronouns! Plenty of people on the internet didn't like this very much, viewing as his criticism as blowing something that isn't even a problem anyways out of proportion. Some of Az's detractors included members of the skeptic community, a loose collection of YouTubers who achieved fame by going after left-wing extremists in the early to mid-2010s, such as Chris Raygun, Some Black Guy, and The Act Man. Feeling that the backlash to Az's rant was not only built on fallacious reasoning, but that the skeptics who shat on him deserved particular scorn for vindicating a character assessment he'd made of them several years prior, a political commentator named Razorfist made a short rant refuting several of the arguments these detractors made throughout the drama. This drew the ire of another commentator, this one being a slideshow commentator by the name of the Ephraimentator. Ephraim made a video critiquing Razorfist's critique of Az's critics, a video that I felt was, for lack of a nicer word, complete dog shit. I thereby made my own response video critiquing Ephraim's critiques of Razorfist's rant, which Ephraim promptly responded to himself about two weeks later. As you could probably tell from the fact that you're sitting here watching yet another response to Ephraim, I didn't think he did a very good job of debunking many of the arguments I made in my response to him. And as you could probably tell from what I said at the beginning of this video, he isn't the only one I'm going to be responding to. That's right, there's one other person who critiqued my critiques of Ephraim's critiques of Razorfist's critiques of Az's critics. God, I need a thesaurus. And their video on me is so mind-bogglingly bad that I have no choice but to tear it a new asshole. However, I'll wait until we're finished going through Ephraim's video before I deal with them. Now that you're all caught up with the context behind these two videos, let's proceed with the commentary. Take it away, Ephraim. Blowing it all out of proportion? Oh no! Someone blowing something out of proportion in a video game so they can rant about it for comedic effect. <gasps> Golly gee willikers, I hope nobody makes an entire fucking YouTube genre like that in 2004. You should know all about 2004, seeing as that's where your politics flash froze. Okay, first off, this tweet doesn't actually see Angry Joe saying that this is being blown out of proportion and is more him making fun of the idea of complaining about something being woke in the first place by sarcastically suggesting a review show that rates things based on how woke they are. Ephraim, the punchline to Angry Joe's joke is that as is blowing something out of proportion. Then why did Angry Joe say it? 
while quote tweeting Dan Vask and not as. Wow, you're starting this response off strong, Ephraim. How could I possibly recover from such an amazing point? Oh, except maybe to reframe my original argument. Ahem, the punchline to Angry Joe's joke is that as and the people who agree with him are blowing something out of proportion. And this also reveals the issue with the AVGN comparison more generally, because even ignoring the fact that, yeah, some of these people might not like the AVGN and the angry video game style of reviewing more generally, which is perfectly possible. Perfectly possible, but not relevant in the slightest. Why? Because disliking how someone is expressing a criticism does not refute the criticism being expressed. But that was completely irrelevant to the point at hand. Razorfist was defending Az's rant on the basis that it was similar to what the AVGN does. Yes, and so the question becomes, how does someone not liking the AVGN style of content anyways make Razorfist's comparison between the two a bad defense for Az's rant? Remember, Razorfist's point is that the people who were complaining that Az was blowing something out of proportion are completely missing the fact that Az specifically chose to deliver his criticisms about the preferred pronouns option in an angry fashion for the sake of comedy. You're supposed to find it funny that he's angrily shouting about such a minute aspect of the game. Much like how the AVGN's angry style of reviewing is supposed to make people laugh. Bringing up that people might not like this style of content anyways, which is what you were arguing in your original video, does not debunk Razorfist's comparison. Nor does it debunk any of the points that Az made in his rant, since for the upteenth time, not liking the way somebody makes a point does not refute the point. However, that defense only works if somebody already likes the AVGN style of content. Once again, I ask how somebody disliking the AVGN style of content renders Razorfist's comparison bunk. Whether you like angry reviews or not, that doesn't change the fact that Az's hyperbolic anger was comedic in nature, nor does it refute any of his criticisms of the game. If they don't, they could agree with Az and still dislike his rant. Oh man, history did not do any favors for this argument. Tell me, Ephraim, if Az is in such danger of alienating people who might otherwise agree with his complaints about the preferred pronouns option because they disliked the way he phrased his complaints, then why did he gain over 10,000 subscribers throughout the controversy? How do you also explain why there were several commenters on Az's video about the controversy who felt that his delivery of his points was completely justified? Commenters whom I spotlighted later on in my original response to you. I mean, if this were such a problem, you'd think that Az would have taken a bigger hit to his channel. Even if I were to grant that people could feel this way about Az's rant, there's once again nothing inherently wrong with how someone chooses to make an argument. For example, if I dislike absurdist cartoons, yet there happens to be an absurdist cartoon that makes a political point I agree with, does that mean that the animator was inherently wrong to create that absurdist cartoon just because I dislike that genre of art or that the point being expressed by the absurdist cartoon is wrong because I dislike the way it's being expressed. The obvious answer to both of those questions is no. However, I never conflated the two. Then why did you bring any of this up to begin with? You're just assuming I did for the sake of this argument. Jog on.
The comparison falls apart due to the AVGN complaining about problems that most people agree actually exist? Is that really the standard we want to set for the validity of Razorfist's comparison? Whether or not the majority of people agree that the problem as was ranting about in a comedically angry fashion is a problem? Because there was once a time where the majority of Americans thought that black people were better off as slaves. So by this logic, if As went on an angry rant denouncing slavery, Razorfist would be wrong to defend him by pointing out that angry political commentators have existed for centuries because the majority of people disagree with the position that slavery is wrong. Yeah, if Razorfist were to defend that hypothetical rant because it's similar to a different political rant that people agreed with, that would be bad reasoning. It's like talking to a brick wall, I swear to god. I've already explained how this wouldn't be bad reasoning on Razorfist's part, so I will instead direct you guys' attention to how Ephraim completely ignores the fact that he is operating on bad reasoning, since his argument for Razorfist's comparison being bunk is that most people agree that the problems that the AVGN complains about in in his angry game reviews are actual problems, whereas the reverse is true of As. The comparison falls apart due to the AVGN complaining about problems that most people agree actually exist? Which is an appeal to popularity. But yeah, just go ahead and double down on your stupid point while ignoring the actual criticism I was making in this portion of the video. I'm not even saying that I disagree with Az's rant in this portion of the commentary. All I'm doing is declaring Razor Fist's comparison between Az and the AVGN faulty. That's weird. I don't recall bringing up your own thoughts on Az's rant at this point in my original response to you either. In fact, all of my arguments up to this point have stayed on topic. That topic being your attempted rebuttal of Razorfist's comparison. I also love the implication here that I shouldn't be responding to any of this because it doesn't have anything to do with Ephraim's feelings on Az's rant itself. I'm sorry Ephraim, but if you make a bad point, I'm going to refute it regardless of if it has anything to do with your personal feelings about Az's rant. Also, how are you so sure that the majority of people disagreed with what Az said? The dude gained 10,000 subscribers over the course of the controversy, and the video he made on the matter has a relatively positive like to dislike ratio. You say while well, showing a video- Uh, I think you mean showing a screenshot there, buddy. Where we can't see the number of dislikes, meaning we have no idea what the like to dislike ratio was. Okay, you know what? Fair enough. I will concede to Ephraim that I should have put the full like to dislike ratio in my video. That was pretty negligent of me. Also, like to dislike ratios on individual YouTube videos aren't a very good way of determining what opinions are popular and unpopular. The average YouTube video has a like to dislike ratio of 9 to 1. So first of all, this argument implies that most people who like videos are just brain dead sheep who don't actually engage with what they're watching and instead just blindly like these videos, since that would be the only reason to call the average video's like to dislike ratio into question. And in order to verify a claim like that, we would have to survey everyone who's ever liked a YouTube video, or at least a large majority of those viewers, as to why they liked those videos. However, even if we grant that presupposition to Ephraim, I actually did do a tiny survey of the people who liked Az's video. In my original response, 
I showed 50 commenters from Az's video who agreed with the points he was making, so I don't think it's unreasonable for me to conclude from that sample size that the majority of people who liked Az's video liked it because they agreed with his opinion and the way he expressed it, which would therefore make those opinions popular. And all of this ignores the other tidbit I brought up in my original response to Ephraim, which was that Az gained 10,000 subscribers and had multiple huge YouTubers supporting what he said and how he said it. The dude gained 10,000 subscribers over the course of the controversy. The fact that other huge commentators like Razorfist, Geeks and Gamers, The Quartering, and Young Ripper 59 made videos defending as that their fans generally agreed with shows that this was not a one-sided controversy. I don't know how it would be unreasonable for me to infer from all of this that his position is popular. And if we're judging by that standard, as his video actually has a worse like to dislike ratio than the typical YouTube video, making it less well liked than average, I should note. Given this is equal to about 84% likes, at least according to the results I got when I used my add-on, which lets me see how many dislikes a video has. <laughs> Oh, what a bombshell argument, Ephraim. As his video has a slightly less positive like to dislike ratio than the average YouTube video. So in spite of all of the other evidence Alex presented for why he feels that as his opinion is popular, this means that it's actually not popular. Fucking high IQ moves from Ephraim here, guys. I cannot believe how much this video is destroying me. And only 4% of videos have more dislikes than likes. Once again, you would have to make some pretty big assumptions about everyone that ever likes a YouTube video. And also ignore all of the other evidence I presented in my original video for any of this to matter. And these include videos that disagree with Az, by the way. Communist Creepers video criticizing as, for example, has a perfect like to dislike ratio. However, both as's opinion and Creepers opinion can't be the popular one at the same time given they both directly contradict each other. As seen by the fact that Creepers video quite literally exists to argue against as's. First of all, this retard is conflating popular with universal. An opinion does not need to be shared by the vast majority of people in order to be considered popular. For example, reproductive rights is an issue where both sides hold considerable sway in American politics. Pro-choice is as popular of a position as pro-life, which is reflected by the variances of restrictions on abortions among the states. Second of all, and I cannot believe I have to say this, but the whole of society is not a hive mind. Different groups of people can support different things, so I can absolutely believe that both Az and Communist Creeper can have near unanimous support for their positions from their respective audiences without conceding that one position is more popular than the other. Which is what you were implying in your original video when you said that the majority of people actually agreed that the problems AVGN was shouting about were actual problems. The comparison falls apart due to the AVGN complaining about problems that most people agree actually exist. So once again, Ephraim, I would like to know how none of what I've brought up thus far doesn't actually disprove your assertion that the majority of people disagreed with as. Here we come. 
That same video is littered with comments expressing solidarity with Az that have received hundreds of upvotes. So is Vosh's. I'll even read you a few. Don't bother, Ephraim. I've already explained how this doesn't prove that your opinion is the one that the majority of people share, so just get to your point. Again, Alex, if this is the metric you're using to judge if opinions are popular or not, you find all sorts of contradictory views being popular. Then what were you basing your original assertion on, huh, Sherlock? Either society as a whole just has this massive case of cognitive dissonance, or there's something fundamentally wrong with your metric. <sighs> I've already responded to this, so let's just keep going. Comments that I will now be flashing on the screen for you in a comedic montage. Okay, I'm not going to be showing the entirety of the montage, however, I decided to do a little bit of math, and, well, Alex greatly overestimated exactly how many people were supporting as. You see, Alex shows a total of 50 comments, assuming my counting was correct. Of them, I counted two, with more than 200 likes. So at most, 4% of the comments Alex showed could back up the notion that hundreds of people supported as. Making me wonder what exactly the point of putting up the other 96% of the comments even was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll just ignore how the video itself still has an overwhelmingly positive like to dislike ratio and how several of the comments still had dozens of upvotes. The mere fact that As gained tens of thousands of subscribers from this drama, and the fact that there were numerous other YouTubers, big and small, who uploaded videos defending him throughout the controversy, videos that themselves received generally positive like to dislike ratios and supportive comments, should be proof enough that Az's position is a popular one. There has to be some group of people out there that's receptive to what all of these guys are saying, or else they wouldn't have gained all of this traction from this situation. However, even ignoring all of that, none of this backs up Alex's point because he hasn't given us anything to really compare these numbers to. Why don't you apply that same standard to yourself, buddy? Because you imply twice in your original video that your opinion was the one that the majority of people held, and you provided no evidence for that conclusion. The comparison falls apart due to the AVGN complaining about problems that most people agree actually exist. The point being, the anger, although hyperbolized, at the very least feels justified. While many do not feel that such rage is understandable when seeing an option to select pronouns. Which most people think is a cartoonishly small thing to get upset over. And why would I need to compare his numbers to anything? In the 1972 presidential election, 29,170,383 people voted for George McGovern. However, not only did McGovern lose, but with over 60% of the electorate voting for incumbent President Richard Nixon. This is considered one of the biggest landslides in presidential history because that only made up 37.5% of the total electorate. What kind of demented mind do you have to have to say that a candidate who engendered the support of over 29 million people was not popular just because the other candidate received more votes? If George McGovern wasn't popular among some groups of people, he wouldn't have even been in the running for president in the first place. He would have dropped out of the race during the Democratic primaries because other candidates for the Democratic Party's presidential ticket got more votes. 
So by definition, he had to be more popular than the other Democrats who were running for president in order to face Richard Nixon in the general presidential election. But no, no, no. Since McGovern received less votes than Nixon did, and since the people who voted in this election only made up a fraction of the eligible electorate, then he wasn't popular. Even though Ephraim has provided no evidence that this is how the majority of people measure popularity, nor why the majority of people should measure popularity this way. I think the funniest thing about Ephraim's standard is that even if we accept it as our own, it still wouldn't be an accurate measure of popularity either. Since it's not like the people who abstained from voting in the Nixon-McGovern election only did so because they didn't like either candidate, or that they all would have voted for Nixon if they had. You would have to prove that either of those things were the case for this argument to hold any water. There's also the chance that this election could have been, shall we say, fortified, and thus the support Nixon garnered was artificially inflated, lest we forget this was the same election in which the Watergate scandal took place. Sure, we might not know why Nixon's campaign tried to spy on the Democratic Party, but a scandal of this size and magnitude would at the very least cast doubt on the validity of this election's results. I mean, Nixon resigned over it for God's sake. You can't just look at the large number and use that as evidence of something being a popular opinion. You have to compare it to the amount of people who disagree. Once again, who measures popularity this way and why should I adhere to this standard? And Alex does not do that at any point in this video. <sighs> I disagree with this premise, and I've already explained why, so what I'm instead going to do is remind all of you that the burden of proof was on him, because he was the one implying throughout his original video that Az's opinion was unpopular. And this is especially the case given the metric Alex used in the first place, which was the amount of people who liked Az's video. It wasn't just the positive like to dislike ratio, you fucking liar. However, that's not really the best metric when it comes to a clip that's been shown in various other videos. Oh, you mean like the plenty of videos that were uploaded defending him? Oops. Or one that has gone viral and been seen and memed all across the internet. Once again, assuming that all of the memes were against as... Because that is inherently a rather small sample regarding the amount of people who actually watched that rant. Then Ephraim, please explain to me how As gained subscribers, tons of subscribers, from this controversy and why there were big name YouTubers who uploaded videos defending what he did. If he was expressing an unpopular opinion in an unpopular way, then why didn't his channel take a bigger hit from it? Going back to Vosh's video on this topic, he didn't even watch Az's rant through the YouTube video Alex showed, instead watching it after it had been posted by Hassan on Twitter. However, Vosh's dislike for the rant would not show up in the like-to-dislike statistics Alex showed. Nor would the dislike of anybody who saw the rant either through Hassan's Twitter or through it being shown on Vosh's channel, but then didn't go over to Az's channel to give the video a dislike. You want to know where their dislike for the rant would show up, Ephraim? On the mere existence of these videos and tweets shitting on Az, as well as the positive like-to-dislike ratio of said videos and tweets that you showed earlier, as well as the supportive comments left on those videos that you also showed earlier. Basic logic dictates that the people most likely to have seen Az's video on Az's channel are Az's fan base. And given the statistics we already established, they are more likely to enjoy the video and give it a like than not by an overwhelming margin. Yes, and the exact same thing can be said of Hassan, Bosch, 
Communist Creeper, Your Movie Sucks, and anybody else who made a video shitting on ass. So the positive reception of their videos can't be an indicator of how popular their opinions are either. You guys know that really infamous Pauline Keel misquote from after the 1972 presidential election? There are different versions of it, but it usually goes something like, I can't believe Nixon won. Nobody I know voted for him. That's what this reminds me of. Alex is essentially saying that the majority of people must have agreed with Az because the majority of people who rated the video when watched on Az's channel gave it a thumbs up. I just love how he puts words into my fucking mouth. I never said that the majority of people must have agreed with Az because the video that he made about this drama has an overwhelmingly positive like to dislike ratio. Rather, I was contesting Ephraim's claim that the majority of people disagreed with Az by citing one of several different pieces of evidence, one of which just happened to be the overwhelmingly positive like to dislike ratio that Az's video about the drama garnered. I even made it a point to clarify that I wasn't denying that people disagreed with Az, but rather what I was denying was that most people People disagreed with as. I'm not saying that nobody disagreed with as, but to say that most people did is patently wrong. This is why I have no problem calling Ephraim a liar and assuming the worst from him. He will actively misconstrue your points and or flat out lie about your points and cut out things that are inconvenient to his narrative to make his arguments as evidenced by the fact that he doesn't even acknowledge how As gained 10,000 subscribers thanks to this drama, which would really fly in the face of the idea that the opinions he expressed and the way he expressed them are not popular, and the fact that many of the arguments Ephraim uses to dismiss the positive like to dislike ratio on Az's video about the drama and all of the supportive comments that Az got on that video could easily be used to debunk the claim that his opinion is the one that's popular. And that level of cognitive dissonance could only be achieved by somebody who's arguing in bad faith. The point being, the anger, although hyperbolized, at the very least feels justified. Right. Just like how those of us who were on Az's side felt that his hyperbolized anger towards the preferred pronouns choice in Starfield's character creator was justified. But not the person who Razorfist was attempting to argue against through using the AVGN as a point of comparison. Right. And what was the brilliant criticism of Az's rant that his detractors made? The one that Razorfist was arguing against? He's blowing it all out of proportion? Wow. You guys mean to tell me that the point Az was making in his rant was wrong because he was getting way too upset over a minute detail from a video game? even though as was purposefully overreacting to that detail for comedic effect? What an absolutely stunning critique. You know what, I've changed my mind about this. As was wrong, and anybody who shouts in their videos for comedic effect is also wrong. I learn more life-altering wisdom from the internet with each passing day. Razorfist's point basically comes down to Az's rant being okay because people who agreed with it felt the hyperbolic ranting was entertaining. No, his point is that the rant was supposed to be entertaining. Whether or not you agree with what As said, or even find this style of content entertaining, has no effect on the fact that the rant was supposed to be funny. Nor does it mean that As was wrong for delivering his point the way he did, nor that his point itself was wrong. However, he's saying so in response to people who are criticizing the rant because they disagreed with it. Yes, but the reason they disagree with it is because they felt that Az was blowing something out of proportion even though that was the point of his rant. 
he's not actually addressing the point. This coming from the guy who not two minutes ago blatantly lied about one of the points that I was making in my original video. Remember, hyperbole is defined as extravagant exaggerations. However, in order for you to exaggerate those feelings, you have to have them in the first place. And if your underlying point is moronic, then your rant is going to be moronic. So why is Az's argument moronic? Are you ever going to explain why you feel that way, Ephraim? Because we're almost halfway through your video, and I have yet to receive an explanation for why you think Az is wrong. Okay, Alex does this a couple of times, asking why I think Az's rant is stupid, as if I need to explain that. You kinda do need to explain that, considering that there would be no arguments from Racerfist for you to criticize if Az never went on his rant in the first place. Since the people who Razorfist was responding to in his video were Az's detractors. And again, Ephraim, you took their side by claiming that most people disagreed that the preferred pronouns was a problem. If you're going to take their side, it would be incumbent of you to explain to me why As was wrong so that I can see if your argument holds any weight. Otherwise, it just comes off like you making an assertion and just expecting the rest of us to fall in line with you. However, the video's not on Az. It's me criticizing Razor Fist's criticism of Az's critics. Once again, there would be no video from Razor Fist for you to criticize if Az had never gone on his rant. And you presented Az's detractors as the ones who were in the right. So you are gonna have to explain why you guys are right if you want me to change my mind. If I wanted to criticize as specifically, I would have just covered his original rant. However, I did not do so because I wanted to further the conversation. Then answer me this, retard. How in the fuck are we going to further a conversation on this topic if I don't even know what you're grounding your criticisms of Razorfist on. Remember, your criticism of Razorfist's comparison rests on the idea that Az's point and the way he delivered it are both wrong. You're gonna have to explain why that is in order for us to further the conversation about this. My disagreement with Az is essentially the same disagreement all of his critics had. That it was a cartoonishly small game feature. How important you think this feature is doesn't automatically make Az's criticism of it wrong. Nor is he wrong for choosing to express that criticism in a comedically angry fashion. Because as I brought up in my original response to you, there are probably people out there who feel that the AVGN ranting about bad mechanics in 30 year old NES games is also a cartoonishly small thing to get upset over. And he was getting upset about it because he for no reason associates the mere act of allowing players to choose a non-binary character if they would like with some political statement. So how exactly is Bethesda giving players the option of choosing to play as a non-binary space explorer if they want to, and how exactly is as wrong to associate the insertion of a preferred pronouns option in Starfield's character creator with a political statement, if there's no option to disable the preferred pronouns choice? Once again, as I also brought up in my original response to you, swap out preferred pronouns with Nazism and see if your logic still holds up. If the game is forcing your character to endorse Nazi ideology and doesn't give you the choice to disable that option, how are you being given the freedom to design whatever type of character you want? In universe, your character endorses Nazism, just like your character endorses modern gender ideology since Bethesda won't let you disable the option in the character creation screen. Yeah, that sure sounds like freedom to me.
And how would this not seem like Bethesda is making a political statement about the merits of National Socialism if they force you to endorse the ideology before you can play their RPG? I mean, what other possible reason would they have to force you to endorse Nazism before you can play the game? To appeal to the 0.2% of people out there that are actual Nazis? Again, you could just play the game as a Nazi if you really want your character to be a Nazi. You don't need an option in the character creator to force that onto your character any more than you need an option in the character creator to force preferred pronouns onto your character if you want them to buy into modern gender ideology in game. Just play as a woman and have all of the game's characters refer to you as a woman like you want. Oh, and Ephraim, do you want to go ahead and remind me where the idea of using preferred pronouns came from? That's right, modern gender ideology, which is an ideology that was created by the far left. So you'll forgive me if I think Bethesda putting in this option in their character creator is them making a political statement about this far left ideology. But Alex, what about non-binary people? Don't they deserve to be represented in games? That leads me to my final objection to this point. What if you're somebody like me, who believes that gender dysphoria is a serious mental health issue that should not be enabled and normalized throughout society through coercive means, such as putting preferred pronouns options in our video games, just like we shouldn't enable and normalize other serious mental health issues, like anime anorexia, or schizophrenia. I mean, sure, we should normalize them in the sense that people shouldn't be shamed for having these mental disorders, but that is different from glorifying the mental disorders and portraying them as something positive that we should continually enable, which is what I'm against. And I feel that what Bethesda is doing with this preferred pronouns choice falls into that category. What exactly is your argument to convince me that it's a good thing that people have the freedom to roleplay as non-binary characters? However, what would the video really gain from me stopping and explaining that? Well, it would've, and I'm just spitballing here, made it a lot easier for us to further a conversation about this topic. But you wouldn't be interested in that. I mean, it's not like that was the exact reason you gave for responding to Razorfist's rant in the first place or anything. Especially given you could assume that's my belief on the basis that I was choosing my words in such a way that made it clear that I agreed with the people Razorfist was criticizing. First off, I just find it hilarious that the guy who spent the first 10 minutes of his video criticizing me for making a bunch of assumptions about his arguments is now asking me to assume what his position against Az's rant is. Second off, Ephraim is acting like I'm making a Herculean demand of him. What would the video have gained from me stopping it to explain why I disagreed with Az? Nigga, it literally took you only half a minute to give your explanation. Call me crazy, but I don't think you would have died if you added that bit into your original video. Third off, no, no you really couldn't. Nice try though, buddy. Also, I love how Ephraim said, However, in order for you to exaggerate those feelings, you have to have them in the first place. Because it implies that Az is a grifter who doesn't actually believe any of the things he says and is just trying to farm views and subscriptions from outraged viewers. How? I'm saying he exaggerated how he felt. No, you fucking didn't, you dirty liar. Listen to your fucking words again. However, in order for you to exaggerate those feelings, you have to have them in the first place. You said 
in order for you to exaggerate those feelings, you have to have them in the first place. How is that not implying that as doesn't feel one way or the other about the preferred pronouns choice in Starfield's character creator? You honestly could have just backed out of this argument by saying that you misspoke. But no, if you're more comfortable outright lying about what you said in your original video, then I'm not going to do you the courtesy of listening to whatever bogus explanation you've cooked up for me. We're skipping to the next point. You know that clip that was uniformly made fun of because you can get that gem incredibly easily with the blanket? Which Chris had, by the way? You son of a bitch! I believe this! Look how close I was! Okay, I agree that the irate gamer is a retard, but how does him being wrong about this issue make as wrong about this completely different issue? I never said it did! Then why did you precede those clips by saying this? And if your underlying point is moronic, then your rant is going to be moronic. You're going to look less like James Rolfe and more like, to continue with the angry reviewing comparison, that really infamous clip of the irate gamer trying to get the red gem in Aladdin? And also, why was this? The comparison falls apart due to the AVGN complaining about problems that most people agree actually exist? The second argument you ever made against Razorfist's comparison. It really sounds like you're arguing that Az's criticisms were unfounded and then offered up an example of the irate gamer expressing unfounded criticisms in order to justify people's reactions to Az's rant, which would imply that your assertion against Az relies on guilt by association because you failed to explain why his criticisms were unfounded. This is the kind of accusation you could have probably avoided if you'd have just given a proper reason why Az was wrong instead of justifying people's reactions to him by pointing to an instance in which this other video game reviewer got something wrong. But remember what Ephraim said earlier, guys. What would the video really gain from... Me stopping and explaining that. I cannot believe that there are people who watched this video and thought it was a good takedown of my original commentary. All I was doing was drawing a comparison between how most people reacted to that clip of the IRA gamer and how those who disagreed with Az reacted to his rant in order to make a point about Razorfist's AVGN comparison. Yeah, that point being that Razorfist's comparison was bunk because unlike Az, the AVGN's angry style of reviewing is accepted by the denizens of the internet because he was complaining about things that most of them agreed agreed were problems with the video games he was covering. The issue with that is, you haven't actually explained why Az was wrong about anything he said, which is what this entire fucking point hinges on. Or why the reaction to his rant was justified. You just pointed to a time where the irate gamer got shit on by the internet for getting something objectively wrong about a component of a game he was complaining about, and insinuated that since the irate gamer was wrong about this thing in a video game, as must therefore be wrong about this other thing in a different video game, aka guilt by association. Once again, Ephraim's just blatantly lying about what he said in his original video. I was explaining why those who disagree reacted the way they did. Yes, but that was after you asserted that Az was wrong, which was the point I was contesting in the first fucking place. I wasn't even inherently saying I disagreed with it personally. This explanation kind of flies in the face of the point you made preceding these clips. And if your underlying point is moronic, then your rant is going to be moronic. Maybe it's just me, but when you say 
if your underlying point is moronic, it kind of sounds like you're saying that Az's point is wrong. So not only is Ephraim lying about what he said, but he's once again lying about what I said, since this point only works if I at any point in my original video had raised an issue with the way that people reacted to irate gamers blunder. Which I didn't. My original question was how this blunder proved that Az's criticisms were wrong. Okay. I agree that the irate gamer is a retard, but how does him being wrong about this issue make as wrong about this completely different issue? However, the Rageaholic does have a response to that. You see, other people don't think that's the case, apparently. Wait. So, are you conceding that there are people out there who think Az had a point? When did I deny that in the first place? That's a good question, Ephraim. Editor, if you will. The comparison falls apart due to the AVGN complaining about problems that most people agree actually exist? The point being, the anger, although hyperbolized, at the very least feels justified. While many do not feel that such rage is understandable when seeing an option to select pronouns. Which most people think is a cartoonishly small thing to get upset over. Sure, I said a few things that might imply I believe those who agreed with Az were in the minority. I flat out don't believe him. He was saying that those who supported Az were in the minority. He can try to argue otherwise, but he's already given me plenty of reasons not to buy that argument. However... Obviously, I understood some people agreed with him. I'm covering one of those people in the video you're commentating on. If indeed you never were saying that those who agreed with Az's rant were in the minority, I would really like to know why you think society suffers from cognitive dissonance. I agree, it is no big deal, and if you don't believe me, suggest the pronouns be removed. I guarantee within moments your Twitter mentions will be stacked to the ceiling with strangers eager to inform you precisely why it would be no big fucking deal. You see, I don't even get what the point is supposed to be here. Well, if you said that, others would disagree. Okay, why should I give a shit? It's not just that people will disagree with you, it's that you'll get unwarranted hatred for suggesting that pronouns be removed from games like Starfield, and you'll run the risk of being deplatformed over your opinion. That is what Razorfist points out later on in this very clip. It's such a small deal that when an impossibly based Battletech fan modded the 2018 PC game to remove the silly ass penis pronouns from the game, it was permanently fucking banned from the Mod Nexus website. But remember, folks, it's no big fucking deal. And to prove it, they'll deplatform you. The reason why any of this matters is because I thought that preferred pronouns weren't that big of a deal. So why is any of this shit happening? Because sometimes people are wrong on both extremes. I don't know what else to tell you here, Alex. How about you start by explaining how in the fuck As was wrong and how he constitutes the other side of the extremes regarding the preferred pronouns option. What, because he criticized the option in a way you didn't like? Get the fuck out of here. Az never encouraged his followers to engage in extremist behaviors to push his views. For fuck's sake, he didn't even call for a boycott of Starfield, which is the only mistake I believe he actually made throughout this controversy. Meanwhile, the other side of the extreme on this issue was deplatforming people that disagreed with them. So, the preferred pronouns option can't really be a small deal, as as his detractors were claiming, if the other side is acting with such ferocity against those that oppose it. Which is what Razorfist was trying to argue by bringing all of this up in the first fucking place. But Alex, didn't you say earlier that the preferred pronouns option was a minute detail? Well, yeah, except we were never arguing that it wasn't. Rather, 
Our argument is there's nothing wrong with the way As chose to criticize it. Because one, his overreaction was supposed to be seen as funny, primarily because it was an overreaction over such a minute detail. And two, this minute detail is a big deal to the other side of the culture war, so much so that they deplatform anyone who tries to get rid of the option, so they cannot try to take the moral high ground by acting as if we're the ones who are overreacting. Anyone who tries to deny those two points is either a moron or a liar. Yeah, if somebody is treating pronouns as such a big deal, they need to deplatform modders who attempt to change the game so they're not included, I also think that is incredibly silly. But that doesn't debunk the idea that they're not that big of a deal. You know what it does debunk Ephraim? The argument from Aziz's detractors that we're the ones overreacting. You cannot pull that card if your side is the same one deplatforming people who disagree with you. And really, what's stopping me from just arguing that Aziz's detractors are the ones overreacting? I mean, for fuck's sake. All that happened was that some fat white guy yelled about something in a video game for two minutes. Who the hell cares? However, I wouldn't use that argument because it doesn't debunk anything you've said thus far. So please don't use it against me. All it does is mean other people believe the same wrong things and have also done silly things because they believe something incorrect. Yeah, but what does any of that mean? Let's say I agree with you that Starfield having preferred pronouns in its character creator is no big deal. So what? Whether or not we think something is a big deal has no bearing on whether or not somebody like Az is right in both his criticism of that thing and how he chooses to express that criticism. And, uh... Hey, Ephraim, we're not talking about whether or not the option is a big deal right now. We're talking about the hypocrisy of Aziz's detractors. The option being a small deal anyways has no bearing on the claim of hypocrisy that both Razorfist and I were making. Are these people rational? Well, I'm about a good chunk of the way through your commentary, so I can confidently say that the answer to that question is no. You know, I like this point because Alex unintentionally agrees with me. Oh, I can't wait to hear this one. Remember, I'm saying the people Razor is mentioning are irrational and therefore should not be taken seriously. No, you first asked why you should give a shit that other people on the opposite side of this extreme think this is a big deal. You see, I don't even get what the point is supposed to be here. Well, if you said that, others would disagree. Okay, why should I give a shit? You then asked if these people are irrational, but you did not say that they were irrational. Are these people rational? What are their reasons for disagreeing? And before somebody argues, but Alex, Ephraim was calling the modders who were being deplatformed for taking the preferred pronouns option out of Starfield's character creator idiots. Keep in mind that those were not the people whom Razorfist was talking about in this segment of his video. He was talking about other people who also think that pronouns pronouns are a big deal. But I agree, it is no big deal, and if you don't believe me, suggest the pronouns be removed. I guarantee within moments your Twitter mentions will be stacked to the ceiling with strangers eager to inform you precisely why it would be no big fucking deal. I.e. people who disagreed with him as Ephraim himself said. You see, I don't even get what the point is supposed to be here. Well, if you said that, others would disagree. Okay, why should I give a shit? Are these people rational? What are their reasons for disagreeing? Given you prefaced this argument by saying you don't think it's that big of a deal, obviously you wouldn't agree with these people, so why do you think we should put so much stock in the opinions of people you don't agree with? So, if Ephraim or anyone else tries to pull that argument, sorry, still doesn't work. Ow! 
Alex is agreeing with that. No, I was merely saying that your arguments were irrational. So, Alex, I have to ask, why is Az's point rational if irrational people agree with a certain aspect of it, but take it to the opposite extreme? So, first of all, Ephraim just admitted that his own arguments are irrational. So, really, the debate is over, and I have won. Second of all, why don't you explain to me how Az was being irrational? Third of all, would you please explain how ranting into a webcam for two minutes about something you didn't like in a video game is the opposite extreme of deplatforming people who disagree with you? It's such a small deal that when an impossibly based Battletech fan modded the 2018 PC game to remove the silly ass penis pronouns from the game, it was permanently fucking banned from the Mod Nexus website. But remember, folks, it's no big fucking deal. And to prove it, they'll deplatform you. Yeah, and those people are also idiotic, in my opinion. I don't get your fucking point. I just don't. <laughs> So Ephraim acknowledges that the people who claim that the preferred pronouns option in Starfield is quote, no big deal, are acting in ways that betray that claim. I never conceded that. All I did was agree with Razorfist that deplatforming people for saying they aren't a big deal while arguing for their removal was irrational. First of all, yes you did, stop lying to me. Why else would you have called the deplatformers idiots if you didn't think that part of their idiocy was that they were being hypocritical? Especially considering that the hypocrisy point is the whole reason Razorfist was going on this tangent. Second of all, who was arguing for pronouns to be removed and then deplatforming people for saying they aren't a big deal? Like, what? Wasn't it the opposite that was happening? Weren't people arguing against Az's rant by saying that pronouns aren't a big deal and then deplatforming anybody who disagreed with them? Either you're from some bizarro universe where the events of this drama were switched, or you've once again proven that you don't actually watch the videos that you upload to YouTube. And that's pretty sad and even agrees that their deplatforming of dissenters is idiotic, and yet he still doesn't understand what Razorfist's point is? Alright, here is an explanation of Razorfist's point that even a five-year-old can grasp. Starfield having a preferred pronouns option in its character creator is a big deal because modders are getting deplatformed for trying to post mods that remove the option, and commentators are being attacked for criticizing it. If this wasn't that big of a deal, then neither of those things would be happening. Get the picture now, moron? No, because that doesn't even slightly follow. If other people are treating it as a big deal and you agree those people are irrational to do so, that means you don't believe it to be a big deal. Therefore, it isn't and the people who think it is are wrong. Except I was never claiming that this was a big deal. It was Az's detractors who were saying that this wasn't a big deal. My entire point, and Razorfist's entire point as well, was that these people were being hypocritical by saying that this wasn't a big deal, while acting in ways that betray that claim, all the while arguing that we are the ones overreacting. And if people are acting in ways that are incongruent with that position, it doesn't make the position any more correct! When the hell did I ever argue that the position of Aziz's detractors was correct? I was arguing that it was INCORRECT, you fucking lunatic! It just makes those people's premise incorrect! 
Exactly! So, let me run this by you, Ephraim. If the premise for Aziz detractors is that the preferred pronouns option is a small detail, and if they are acting in ways that are incongruent with their premise, how does that not make them hypocrites? Which is the whole point Razor Fist and I have been arguing! It seemed both avowed lefties and fence-sitting skeptic hunts alike all decided to form a douchebag drum circle to shit on this guy. The act ma'am, some hack guy, pris gay run. I didn't bother checking his Twitter feed, but I'm sure Review Tech was firing off with all five chins. If they haven't been remotely relevant since the Sarkeesian witch hunt of aught 15, chances are they were going full mask off on a dude for having the gall to record a funny fucking rant. You remember funny, right, fellas? It's what your index finger smells like after VidCon. Okay, first off, whether or not that rant was funny is entirely subjective. Not according to what you said, only a few minutes ago. And of course, just like this stream several years later, the fact that Chris is basing his anger on something that doesn't make any sense inherently makes his hyperbolized reactions just not entertaining. Do you watch your videos before you upload them to YouTube? Because this seems like a contradiction that you would catch and then correct during the editing process. Never mind how it was clearly implied that my statement was from the point of view of somebody who disagreed with As. Okay, so that argument being from the point of view of a hypothetical person who disagreed with As doesn't change the fact that you contradicted yourself. Surely you must have thought that this was a valid reason to dislike As's rant or you wouldn't have presented it in your video. If you didn't think it was a valid reason, then you've implicitly conceded that the people who are opposing As are doing it for irrational reasons despite explaining earlier in this video why you sided with them. So either Ephraim is dodging my criticism or he has once again admitted that his points are irrational. Meanwhile, Razorfist was treating him thinking it's funny as a reason to disagree with those who didn't like Az's rant. I'm getting really tired of correcting Ephraim, but Razorfist's argument was that Az's overreaction to the preferred pronouns option was supposed to be seen as funny, and that the quote, skepticons who disagreed with Az's rant because they felt it was blowing something all out of proportion, completely missed the point that Az's overreaction to the option was done for comedic effect i.e. they shat on Az for having the gall to record a funny fucking rant. Also, even if Razorfist were saying this, couldn't this logic be used against you as well? Not finding the rant funny is not a valid reason to dismiss anything Az said throughout it either. And lest we forget, Ephraim's reasoning for why Razorfist's comparison between Az and the AVGN was bunk was that people might not like the AVGN's content anyways. And this also reveals the issue with the AVGN comparison more generally, because even ignoring the fact that, yeah, some of these people might not like the AVGN and the angry video game style of reviewing more generally, which is perfectly possible. Whoops, looks like Ephraim just invalidated one of his original points. And second, Hopefully now you know precisely why I called these cockholsters out on their fair weather fucking bullshit years ago. In retrospect, it's abundantly clear most of the skeptosphere on YouTube only attacked Anita in a failed Freudian attempt to distance their own brand of authoritarian collectivism from hers. Hell, most of these motherfuckers make her look moderate these days. You know, I'm not going to sit here and act like it's impossible that actually all the YouTube skeptics did become authoritarian collectivists while I wasn't looking. Looking. Thank God, because I did not want to spend the next hour criticizing all of the collectivist authoritarian nonsense that the amazing atheist has been spewing over the years. I've got a Halloween special to work on, goddammit. I have no idea what the point of that interjection was. That was, my dear Ephraim, what we in the YouTube game like to call a joke. 
Granted, it was a joke calling into question your premise that none of the skeptics have become collectivist authoritarians over the past couple years, but a joke nonetheless. But I am going to say that I find it weird you're using as a jumping off point to discuss this, them making fun of somebody for being angry at non-binary gender options in a video game. First of all, that was not Razorfist's jumping off point. Yes, it was. He is talking about this and then segueing into a larger point about how internet skeptics are authoritarian collectivists. Therefore, he is using the first topic as a jumping off point to discuss the second. Alright, believe it or not, I actually think this is a good point. Razorfist was using the skeptic community's reaction to Az's rant as his jumping off point, and I was wrong for contesting that. However, and this is a big however, I still take issue with Ephraim's framing of Razorfist's point. For instance, Razorfist's larger point was not about how internet skeptics are collectivist authoritarians. Rather, Internet skeptics being collectivist authoritarians was the jumping off point into a wider discussion about the criticisms that people had about Az's rant. This is evidenced by the fact that Razorfist spends the rest of the video debunking the most common rebuttals to Az's rant and calls out several people who are not internet skeptics, such as the admins of Nexus Mods who were deplatforming the modders who took out the preferred pronouns option from the Battletech video game. Why, it's such a small deal that when an impossibly based Battletech fan modded the 2018 PC game to remove the silly ass penis pronouns from the game, it was permanently fucking banned from the mod Nexus website. Strangers on the internet who would flood your Twitter feed with tweets talking about how preferred pronouns are no big deal should you talk about wanting them removed from video games like Starfield? But I agree, it is no big deal, and if you don't believe me, suggest the pronouns be removed. I guarantee within moments your Twitter mentions will be stacked to the ceiling with strangers eager to inform you precisely why it would be no big fucking deal. Angry Joe. But really, that's the faux moderates bitch? He's blowing it all out of proportion? And a bunch of random Twitter users. This video is just the same as a feminist freak out! Don't worry, dipshit. You can just ignore it. Bitch, I wish you'd ignore the urge to respirate. So clearly, Razorfist is casting a wider net than just the internet skeptics when he's talking about collectivist authoritarians. Meaning that the jumping off point was that internet skeptics are collectivist authoritarians, but the larger point of discussion was not limited to that topic. I have other issues with Ephraim's interpretation of Razorfist's point, but I'll get into that in the next clip. In fact, at no point throughout that clip does Razorfist ever say you're not allowed to poke fun of people who are on my side or else you're a collectivist authoritarian. Instead, he goes off on these skeptics for quote, shitting on Az, which could mean joking about him, but could also mean criticizing him for bullshit reason. That's not what a jumping off point is. Razor Fist was saying the internet skeptics were criticizing Az for nonsensical reasons, and then added that he felt they were all collectivist authoritarians. Therefore, he was launching off of the points about Az into his wider issues with the skeptic community. Then why did he spend the rest of his video going after people who are not part of the skeptic community? Also, Ephraim is paraphrasing my interpretation of Razorfist's jumping off point. Razorfist was saying the internet skeptics were criticizing Az for nonsensical reasons. The reason why I have a problem with that is because that wasn't his original interpretation of what Razorfist's jumping off point was. Ephraim originally said that his jumping off point was the skeptic community making fun of as. But I am going to say that I find it weird you're 
using as a jumping off point to discuss this, them making fun of somebody for being angry at non-binary gender options in a video game. And so, while I agree that Razorfist was making a jumping off point, what I still contest is Ephraim's original interpretation of the point. Razorfist's jumping off point wasn't, and I quote, them making fun of somebody for being angry at non-binary gender options in a video game. It was them criticizing as for bullshit reasons. The actual springboard was just the mention of the skeptic community, not their criticism of as specifically. Bullshit. You said that the jumping off point was them making fun of as. But I am going to say that I find it weird you're using as a jumping off point to discuss this, them making fun of somebody for being angry at non-binary gender options in a video game. There would be no reason for Razorfist to drag the skeptic community if they had never given nonsensical reactions to Az's rant in the first place. Hell, I'll even play you Razorfist's exact point so that you can see that he didn't just bring up the skeptic community for no reason. It was as hilarious as it was true, and honestly by Az's standards, relatively tame. I've seen this beautiful bastard rant about Luke fucking Skywalker with 17 times the intensity during a stream we were both sitting in on. In fact, I'd venture to speculate that if nothing further had occurred, that's precisely where the matter would have lied. A one-off, utterly hilarious live stream of the third straight example of disappointing Bethesda bullshit. And then the great Dan Vosk. Ask Basinger, Passenger, fired it onto his social media as if out of a fucking torpedo tube. And folks, <laughs> it was a direct fucking hit, spawning a cyclone of spurg fits and a mountain of what the left loosely define as fucking memes. And after you set aside an afternoon to read two of those, it seemed both avowed lefties and fence-sitting skeptic hunts alike all decided to form a douchebag drum circle to shit on this guy. The act ma'am, some hack guy, pris gay run. I didn't bother checking his Twitter feed, but I'm sure Review Tech was firing off with all five chins. If they haven't been remotely relevant since the Sarkeel witch hunt of aught 15 chances are they were going full mask off on a dude for having the gall to record a funny fucking rant. You remember funny, right, fellas? It's what your index finger smells like after VidCon. Damn it, Ephraim, even when you're in the right, you can't help but say stupid shit that damages your credibility. Especially given, say, everything you want about non-binary gender identities or the concept of gender identity itself, it is incredibly individualistic. I don't recall Razorfist ever saying that it wasn't. But he did say it was being promoted by collectivist authoritarians. Therefore, it seems rather strange that collectivists would support a highly individualistic idea. Keep that exact point in mind, because it will bite Ephraim in the ass soon. It is the idea that only the individual can determine their own identity, and that it can be radically different from everyone else's. Hell, it even includes the idea that two people identifying the same way can have radically different understandings understandings of that identity and mean it in entirely different ways. What the fuck is collectivist about that? It's not necessarily the belief itself that's collectivist, it's what's being done in promotion of the belief that's collectivist. Such as, oh, I don't know, the deplatforming of modders who try to remove the preferred pronouns option from Starfield's character creator. But it's not the internet skeptics who are doing that, it's entirely unrelated people. Whether or not the skeptics were responsible for the deplatforming is completely and utterly irrelevant. Because the point being argued is whether or not modern gender ideology is individualistic. Especially given, say, everything you want about non-binary gender identities or the concept of gender identity itself, it is incredibly individualistic. I argued against this point by saying that Razorfist never made the claim that modern gender ideology wasn't individualistic, and that an ideology being individualistic doesn't prevent collectivist authoritarians from using collectivist authoritarian measures to to promote it. 
And remember, Ephraim himself said in his original video that he wasn't going to contest Razorfist's claim that all of the skeptics have turned into collectivist authoritarians over the years. You know, I'm not going to sit here and act like it's impossible that actually all the YouTube skeptics did become authoritarian collectivists while I wasn't looking. Meaning he's moving away from that argument and making a completely different one. That different one being that modern gender ideology is individualistic. Bringing up that the skeptics themselves never deplatformed anybody is completely irrelevant at best and shifting the goalpost at worst. This doesn't make any sense as a justification for what Razor said. Oh, you mean the point you admitted Razorfist never made? Which was that modern gender ideology wasn't individualistic? Furthermore, what exactly is authoritarian about the idea that you can identify however the fuck you want, and that said identity can mean whatever the fuck you want? I think you should ask the women who have their athletic scholarship opportunities taken away by transgender female swimmers whether or not being able to identify however the fuck you want is authoritarian or not. That is not even wrong. It's just utterly nonsensical. That has nothing to do with authoritarianism. And to be blunt, I am absolutely baffled that you would come to such a conclusion. Alex, I genuinely have to know what is authoritarian about that. I don't mean what's bad about that. I don't mean what's unfair about that. Those are entirely different conversations. I mean, what the fuck is authoritarian about it? How do these two concepts relate? Because I'm just not seeing it in the slightest. Authoritarian. Adjective. Favoring or enforcing strict obedience to authority, especially that of the government, at the expense of personal freedom. Wow, if there were ever a time where Ephraim needed the definition of a word to be on his side, it was right now. You know what strikes me as impeding personal freedom, Ephraim? Taking away scholarship opportunities from women, which then limits how they can obtain a higher education that'll allow them to work better jobs which afford them better pay in case their athletic careers don't work out. Athletic careers, by the way, that'll also be put in jeopardy since it'll be a lot harder for professional scouts from women's sports leagues like the WNBA to notice these female athletes and then draft them to their team so that they can make a living from their passion. If those very women have been denied the opportunity to be scouted by those teams thanks to the trans female athletes in question and giving them to people who merely identify as women and who only qualified for the scholarship because they were competing with an unfair physical advantage, that being the testosterone that their bodies have been pumped with through male puberty that make their bodies stronger than women's bodies. And the only reason why we're doing any of this in the first place is to enforce obedience to the societal attitude that a man can become a woman if they feel that they're a woman. So therefore, trans women should be allowed to compete with women in women's sports regardless of if women feel that that's unfair or if trans women then being given the freedom to undress in the same locker room as biological women makes them feel uncomfortable. And anybody who has a problem with this will be coerced into staying silent about it lest they want to be cancelled for it. Which is kind of exactly what happened with Leah Thomas's teammates. In September of 2021, Leah Thomas began participating as a member of the Penn women's team. Leah, formerly Will, had personal best times in every freestyle event that were faster than the women's world records. Once the season began, Thomas was leading the country in multiple events while only placing in the top 500 in those events on the men's team. Thomas later became an NCAA champion in the 500-yard freestyle the first NCAA champion in our women's team history program. While many of you already know this, what you do not know is the experiences of the women on the University of Pennsylvania swim team. My teammates and I were forced to undress in the presence of Leah, a six foot four tall biological male, fully intact with male genitalia. 
18 times per week. Some girls opted to change in bathroom stalls and others used the family bathroom to avoid this. When we tried to voice our concerns to the athletic department, we were told that Leah's swimming and being in our locker room was a non-negotiable and we were offered psychological services to attempt to re-educate us to become comfortable with the idea of undressing in front of a male. To sum up the university's response, we, the women, were the problem, not the victims. We were expected to conform, to move over and shut up. Our feelings didn't matter. The university was gaslighting and fear-mongering women to validate the feelings and identity of a male. As an attempt to voice my concern about the situation we were forced into, revealing the unjust and unfair treatment, I wrote an op-ed for the Daily Pennsylvanian, the student-run newspaper. I approached this from a scientific, scientific statistical perspective where I used my engineering background to discuss how Y chromosomes cannot be changed by any surgical procedure or systemic therapy. This biological fact lends itself to athletic advantages that cannot be mitigated by lowering testosterone levels, which are readily apparent in sports competitions and locker rooms. The Daily Pennsylvanian published my article on the evening of February 10th, 2022. Only a few hours later, my piece was retracted. I was given no notice nor reasoning. Again, I was silenced from my dissenting viewpoint and felt my First Amendment rights were denied by my university. This is representative of a greater issue, the destruction of free speech. Today, any discussion maintaining the sanctity of women's spaces is labeled transphobic, bigoted, and hateful. What's bigoted and hateful is the discrimination against women and the efforts to erase women and our equal opportunities, dignity, and safe spaces. One might ask, why do I speak so passionately about issues that seem hypothetical or some may perceive as only impacting a small number of women? This is not hypothetical. This is real. I know women who have lost roster spots and spots on the podium. I know of women with sexual trauma who are adversely impacted by having biological males in their locker room without their consent. I know this because I am one of these women. I was sexually assaulted on June 3rd of 2016. I was only 16 years old. I was able to forgive my attacker, but violence against women still exists. Let us not forget the viral Me Too movement that empowered female victims to speak up. It casts a spotlight on the widespread prevalence of sexual assault and abuse, including in scholarly and educational institutions. Individuals on this committee have previously stated violence against women is all too common. I am grateful for those members who have brought awareness to the violence against women in the past, but unfortunately, there's still much to be done. As a sexual assault survivor, many policies pushed today completely ignore my experiences and many women like me. I ask the members of this committee, please consider this issue outside the lens of political affiliations and understand the true impact of ignoring the realities of womanhood. Future generations depend on us. So no, I don't think it's incumbent on me to explain how this is authoritarian. I think the onus is on you to explain to me how it isn't. You should also ask that question to all of the people that have either lost their jobs or even gotten jailed because they refuse to respect somebody's identity. But that's not an authoritarian aspect of the ideology itself, that's just an authoritarian way it could theoretically be implemented. Yeah, which is the exact point I was trying to prove, as is evidenced by the argument I raised right before these interjections. It's not necessarily the belief itself that's collectivist, it's what's being done in promotion of the belief that's collectivist. Admittedly, I did poorly word myself. I should have said whether or not the measures used to enable people who want to identify however the fuck they want are authoritarian. But the point remains. Augusto Pinochet engaged in authoritarianism against those who opposed capitalism when he was the leader of Chile, but that doesn't make capitalism on its own authoritarian after all. But Ephraim, I thought you said earlier that it seems rather strange for racists to believe that collectivist authoritarians would want to push an idea that's individualistic in nature, implying that this could never happen in real life because of the logical contradiction 
contradiction inherent to it. But he did say it was being promoted by collectivist authoritarians. Therefore, it seems rather strange that collectivists would support a highly individualistic idea. Yeah, remember when I said to remember that point because it was gonna bite Ephraim in the ass soon? Well, guess what? The bill has come due. Now that Ephraim has provided an example of an authoritarian collectivist government enforcing the highly individualistic ideology of capitalism, I guess it's not so strange for Razorfist to believe that something like this could conceivably happen, huh? I hate to keep reusing clips from my last video on Ephraim, but... You have to be intellectually dishonest. That is the only explanation for the levels of cognitive dissonance on display here. After hours laboring in vain to write the first funny fat joke of their wasted lives, they all seem to settle on a single talking point, and what they loosely construe for an argument can be distilled to the following. What's the big deal? Pronouns are part of the English language! This video is just the same as a feminist freakout! OMG, he made that point in a silly voice! Now I know it's wrong! The fact that you were more concerned with how Razorfist was stating your position than if he was stating your position accurately is very telling because it shows me that you care more about sounding right than actually being right. What do you mean by concerned? All I did was point out what Razor Fist was doing, saying things in a silly voice to make them sound idiotic, in order to make it sound worse to the audience. Yeah. And you would only raise that objection if you felt that doing that was a bad thing. And so by raising this critique, you are expressing concern for the tactic that Razor Fist is using. Especially considering that this was the very first point you raised. Also, how do you know that's what I'm more concerned with? Because you made that your first critique of Razor Fist's point, thereby giving the implication that the way he delivers his opponent's argument is more important to you than whether or not he was accurate in recounting it. I never even mentioned whether or not the position was stated accurately after all because, credit to him, it actually was, therefore I didn't have any criticism of it. It. Wait, so you mean to tell me that you made that dig for absolutely no reason whatsoever? If you had said that it was a joke that I wasn't meant to take all too seriously, I would have accepted that. Instead, what you're telling me is that you made this point for no reason. I guess we can add padding it out with irrelevant bullshit on the list of reasons why your original video was terrible. But that's not because of priorities, if anything that's because Razor Fist managed to summarize the point of the opposition correctly. So in other words, you made that interjection for no fucking reason. Got it. Also, don't even try to pretend that you haven't done that exact same fucking thing yourself to others. You do not know anything about me, my views, my values, my ideals. You, you don't even next know time, me. You disingenuous fuckwit. The video you showed a clip of is over a year old now. That would have been a good objection if I hadn't packed my video with loads of other examples. I could have very well changed my mind or my commentating style in the time since, so this attempt to call me a hypocrite immediately doesn't make any sense. You just said that you brought up the point about silly voices for no reason. So using the argument that you you could have changed your mind about this point in the time since your video on Lobster Hero was uploaded literally doesn't work because you just told me you weren't trying to critique Razor Fist for anything. Unless, of course, you were trying to critique Razor Fist for something. In which case, I once again have to ask, how are you any better given that there are multiple examples of you doing the exact same thing? And just so you know, you are not the arbiter of how people deliver their criticism 
nor how much anyone is allowed to levy criticism to any given product. You are not the arbiter of how people are allowed to criticize either your videos or the critics of High Guardian Spice. What silly voice am I using here exactly, Lobster Heroes? Ephraim, you are aware that when people imitate their opponent's voices, it's usually done to be derogatory, aren't you? So with that in mind, yes, I do think repeating Lobster Hero's point in his Swedish accent is the same as what Razorfist was doing. It's just a more specific example. Ergo, you're still a hypocrite. And I wasn't just repeating Lobster Heroes' point back to him in said voice like how Razorfist was making the point of people who didn't like Az in a silly voice. I was taking his point and paraphrasing it while changing certain words in order to emphasize that I felt he was being hypocritical. Those are entirely different things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a galaxy brain defense that Ephraim presented here. I'm not being a hypocrite because the way I stated my opponent's argument in a silly voice was different from how Razorfist did it. Seriously, as though feeding your opponent's point back to them in a silly voice? In order to expose their hypocrisy by switching the targets of their original position, wouldn't still have the effect of making the point seem stupider than it was and ergo make people more inclined to agree with you. I don't think I need to tell you guys that I'm not humoring the rest of Ephraim's point. Let's instead see how he dismisses the rest of my evidence. Neko believes Carmen's a woman. Others believe Carmen's a man. Because he's a male. So, they call Carmen a he. Neko calls Carmen a she. Why do they do that? Because differing beliefs. RESPECT AKUMU'S OPINION Another video from over a year ago, meaning I could have changed my mind or commentating style in some way since that video's release. Nope. Sorry, Ephraim. That excuse only works if you did this once. Do it more than once, and you're gonna have to appeal to something other than this is old. Now you might be wondering, why am I bringing up the Alt-CC versus Neo-CC days? That's the past. After all, that's what everyone does when you criticize fucking Mama Doodle Tones. It's because I haven't mentally matured in the slightest in the past five years, and therefore have a very hard time getting new information. Another video from over a year ago? Wow, Alex, you're really bad at finding new and relevant examples. I gotta be honest with you. And you're really bad bad at defending yourself if the best argument you can give to dismiss my evidence is these are old and irrelevant videos. Let's replace stating your opponent's arguments in a silly voice with doxing your opponent. Now let's say that Ephraim doxed three separate people last year and now has the gall to criticize Razorfist for doxing someone. With the excuse that I doxed to these three people over a year ago really be that convincing to a courtroom? Also, here I'm not even repeating Akumu's point back to him in a silly voice. I'm imitating him again like I did with Lobster Hero. Although specifically, I'm using what he said as a jumping off point for the sake of mocking him, which is different from just repeating what he said in a silly sounding tone. Yes, but the point is you were still imitating his voice in order to mock him while attacking his character. Now, just humor me for a second. Ephraim, why would Razorfist repeat his opponent's arguments in a silly sounding voice? Could it be, oh I don't know, to mock them? Again, regardless of the reason, the end result is the same. You're making your opponent sound stupider than they are in order to prime the audience to agree with you. Will I, an online personality, side with you and validate your opinion, or will I give you another video to type angry comments in? Am I on your side or the enemy's? 
And this, dear viewer, is why I hate the culture war. It has this bad habit of making me both paranoid and condescending. And a video from over a year ago, which I put a giant fucking disown stamp over the thumbnail of to make it clear I no longer agree with the opinions I expressed in it. <sighs> you know, if, um, if you were anybody else on the internet, I would be willing to grant that point to you. I would say, you know what? You're right. You did disown the video, so I shouldn't have presented that as evidence of you being a hypocrite. However, you are not just anyone on the internet. You are the affrontator, and I do not respect you. And the reason I do not respect you is because you're a dishonest asshole who argues in bad faith and outright lies about his opponent's arguments. So, you can sit there and tell me that you disowned that video all you want, but guess what? I'm not gonna give a shit. Especially since there are examples of other slideshow commentators who supposedly disowned bad videos they made, but still stirred up drama over those bad videos because they felt the need to defend them, even though, once again, they supposedly disowned those bad videos. Such as, you know, the whole debacle between Doodle Tones, Just a Robot, and Dylan Thomas over a Pokemon list that Jar criticized. But even if, I put my own personal feelings about Ephraim aside, this argument still wouldn't work. And you wanna know why? It's because Ephraim still engages in behavior that Shady Durags called him out for in his video on Ephraim. That behavior being lying about Shady by misconstruing his points and then playing certain points of his out of order in order to make them weaker than they were. Will I, an online personality, side with you and validate your opinion, or will I give you another video to type angry comments in? Am I on your side, or the enemies? Am I the only one who finds something incredibly condescending about YouTubers who begin their videos by treating their audience like a bunch of screaming banshees who plan on going on some kind of rabies-induced rampage the second they hear something that's a different opinion from theirs? No, you are not the only one who feels this way. I just saw a video that did that, and it annoyed the crap out of me. However, that is not what I did in my video. First of all, in case you're not familiar with my channel, I love telling jokes, and I usually take the hyperbolic approach to said jokes. The diction and tone used when I say these lines makes it obvious that I'm not being as serious as I could be. Second, the message I'm giving out is not an example of my typical audience member. It's an extreme example of something a lot of people encounter on the internet, toxic fandom. There is an element of truth to it, but it also doesn't represent everyone. Yes, I'm saying this to my audience as if they're the ones doing it, but given the joking tone of what I'm saying and the fact that this is a common occurrence across the internet, it should come across very clear that I'm not attacking them directly. However, opening the video by essentially saying saying that anybody who watches it either wants their opinion mindlessly regurgitated back to them, or plans to just fling shit at a wall in response to what you say, not only casts your audience in an extremely bad light, but also makes you sound incredibly defensive. With that said, it does give you a very convenient excuse to dismiss those criticizing you, after all, they must be those angry, irrational people who dare view you as the enemy. It would also give those who disagree with me a very convenient excuse against anyone who takes my side. After all, they must be one of those mindless peons who just wants to be validated. In case you didn't notice, at this point in the video, I haven't made my opinion known yet. Thus, the comment I made does not single out anyone who agrees nor disagrees with me. I potentially could be talking about anyone, including other people who don't like the Little Mermaid change. Why would I attack those who agree with me as much as those who don't if I was just looking for a scapegoat? Spoilers, I wasn't just looking for a scapegoat. I do this because the comment is a setup. A setup for what, you may ask? Well, you cut the clip right before the payoff came. Here's what it is in its entirety. Will I, an online personality, side with you and validate your opinion, or will I give you another video to type angry comments in? Am I on your side or the enemy's? 
And this, dear viewer, is why I hate the culture war. The whole point of me talking about people who either rage without properly listening or simply want validation is to set up the point of the culture war, not to attack my audience. I want to talk about the culture war, but I need a proper lead-in from the subject I was just on. I'm making a segue. The lead-in works fine when you keep the context intact and understand the joking nature of what was said. And this, dear viewer, is why I hate the culture war. It has this bad habit of making me both paranoid and condescending. Oh, so you do have the clip. You just put it somewhere else in your video where it wouldn't be as effective. Also, the culture war didn't make me like that. I've always been paranoid and condescending. And what exactly does Ephraim do in this video on me? He's outright lied about many of the points that both he and I originally made. And I'm not gonna go through all of the examples, because if you've made it this far in the video, chances are you already know what those are. So if Ephraim is still engaging in behavior that he has supposedly disowned, why should I give him the benefit of the doubt when he says he's disowned this other bad behavior that I am currently calling him out for? On top of that, saying that you disowned the video is incredibly vague, since I could easily say in response to that, something along the lines of, Oh, so you disowned the video, huh? I guess you don't think that the actress who played Ariel in the live-action Little Mermaid remake is actually a good actress, since you said this in that very same video. I haven't seen any evidence that Halle Bailey was specifically picked for the role based on her race, and instead believe it's more likely she's just an accomplished actress with a history of working for Disney. I guess you also don't think that Birth of a Nation is a racist film that perpetuated any negative stereotypes about black people since you also said this about it in that very same video. To give just one example, let's talk about the 1915 movie The Birth of a Nation, an incredibly racist propaganda piece based off of Thomas Dixon's 1905 novel The Klansman, essentially arguing that because the white man is genetically superior, it is his responsibility to civilize all other races and cultures across the world. Well, Birth of a Nation, it should not surprise you to learn, is incredibly racist. Once again, you cannot just say that you disowned the video and expect that to cover your ass. You have to point me to where specifically you disavowed the exact behavior that I'm currently calling you out for. And for anybody who's gonna ask, Alex, why are you making such obscene demands of Ephraim's evidence? My answer to you is because that's exactly what Ephraim did to me. Remember, he shot down the positive comments that Az received on his video about the Starfield drama because they did not match the exact description that I gave them. So go ahead Ephraim, show me exactly where you disavowed the exact behavior I'm calling you out for and I will be willing to retract this point. Pinko pronouns, particularly those you have no option to disable in-game, aren't a feature any more than some asshole dev deciding your main character is named Humperdink or some shit and not allowing you to change it would be a fucking feature. This isn't the addition of options, it's the excision of them. Again, how is allowing a player to choose to play as a non-binary character if they want the same as forcing one really specific thing upon? Them. That's a great question, and to answer it, let me pose a hypothetical. Say that in Starfield's character creator, one of the questions that players were made to answer regards their opinion of Adolf Hitler's policies about Jews. Now let's say that the only two answers players can give are quote, Hitler was right to gas the Jews, and quote, Hitler didn't gas enough Jews, if you ask me. And the winner of the Godwin Award is Alex the Critic! I'm going to assume that that was a joke, and that you aren't actually trying to invoke Godwin's law here, because it would be really dishonest if you were, for reasons I hope are self-evident. Understandably, this would make people opposed to Nazi ideology very upset. With that in mind, imagine the reaction I would get if I defended this option by saying, quote, Political ideologies have existed for centuries. 
even if you don't like it, you can just ignore it because it doesn't come up anywhere else in the game, nor does it change how the game's characters treat you. Why is it so wrong for Bethesda to want to be inclusive of the Nazis who play their video games? Video games aren't just a form of escapism for people who think like you. I think you can start to see the issue with your reasoning here. You know, for a guy who gets onto me for not explaining every minuscule detail to my audience- Ah yes, the minuscule detail of why you disagreed with the rant that started this entire chain of response videos to fucking begin with. I can really see how that's a minuscule detail. You didn't actually explain why that train of thought was incorrect. Yeah, because Razorfist already explained it for me. Failing that, they fall back to pronouns are actually an RPG feature. Fucking really? Isn't the entire point of transitioning to eventually transition into something? So here's a thought. If you're transitioning into a broad, PLAY IS A FUCKING BROAD! ZERO PRONOUNS REQUIRED! Really, Riri's? This is your play? It's not a glitch, it's a feature? What are you transitioning into, Todd Howard? Pinko pronouns, particularly those you have no option to disable in-game, aren't a feature any more than some asshole dev deciding your main character is named Humperdink or some shit and not allowing you to change it would be a fucking feature. This isn't the addition of options, it's the excision of them. Oh, but you can just ignore it! Yeah, tell you what, in the next Zelda game, instead of Link loping around in his familiar teal tunic, how about if I parked atop his elfin fucking head, a great big jet black double dragon donger flanked by two dangling dude fruits just a flopping in the breeze. But don't worry, dipshit, you can just ignore it. Bitch, I wish you'd ignore the urge to respirate. If you won't allow me to remove an obvious imposition in-game and I'm banned if I deign to fucking mod it, where exactly does the no big deal, it's optional part come in? Cause to me, that sounds about as optional as a fully attached penis. You just said, imagine how people would react if I said that, with the implication being it was negative. I refer you to my last point. The problem is, people will react negatively no matter what you say. There are 8 billion people on this planet after all, Alex. I imagine you can find at least one who's upset at any statement you make. Once again, Ephraim is missing the point of my hypothetical. There is a reason why people would be upset with those potential arguments I gave. Which is that they fail to properly justify the game forcing you to condone Nazism before you can play it. Bringing up that any one of the 8 billion people who live on the planet Earth could conceivably be upset with any given argument I could present in defense of this hypothetical game does not address the central point of the hypothetical, which is to ask, would it be okay for a game to force you to condone an ideology you may very well hate before you can actually play it? And would the arguments I gave in defense of this hypothetical game properly justify that decision making? Also, this has absolutely nothing to do with what I said. Remember, my point was that Razorfist's argument that allowing pronoun selection was in some way removing options didn't make any sense. You including an example of some options that most people would not like to be the only ones in the game doesn't disprove that inherently. Yes, it does, Ephraim, because part of the appeal of role-playing games, especially ones developed by Bethesda, is being being able to create any type of character you want who has any type of political or social leanings your mind can imagine, and roleplay as those characters. Putting in options that force your character to buy into beliefs that either you yourself don't agree with or that the character you're creating would not agree with, options that the players cannot disable by the way, 
is absolutely taking away options from players because it subtracts from our ability to immerse ourselves within our character and by extension the world of the game we're playing. Like what if I don't want my character to be a Nazi or to condone Nazi ideology but the RPG is forcing them to do so before I can play the game Ephraim. Would that not be limiting to the type of experiences we're trying to craft for ourselves. Also, both of those are features because that's just what features are? Oh really? A Bethesda RPG forcing a name onto your character would be a feature? Man, I wonder why they haven't implemented that in any of the Elder Scrolls or Fallout games. Could it be because that's bullshit? No, it's because that would be a feature most of their audience would not approve of given the inherent customization of RPGs being something a lot of fans enjoy about the genre. So in other words, because that's bullshit. I'm convinced that I could sit here and say 2 plus 2 equals 4 and Ephraim would respond to that with No Alex, 2 plus 2 equals 4. Last but not least, if you concede that fans enjoy the open-ended customization options offered to them by Bethesda RPGs, then why are you rushing to the defense of Starfield's preferred pronouns options and by extension pro-Nazi options when those things would hinder this open-ended customization? Since, as I just explained, there's no way to toggle either of these options off for players who don't want to support modern gender ideology nor Nazism. Your points aren't adding up. This would be like if I said Sonic 2 removed features from Sonic 1 because I didn't have the choice to turn off the spin dash. This analogy doesn't even work because Sonic the Hedgehog 2 doesn't force you to continually use the spin dash in order to beat the game. Whether or not the player uses the move to their advantage is entirely up to them. In fact, I'm pretty sure there are videos on YouTube of people trying to beat the game without using the spin dash just for the fun of it. You mean like how Starfield doesn't force you to identify as non-binary just to play the game but gives that choice to players in case they would like to? Oh really? Okay Ephraim, would you like to prove to me that Starfield doesn't force this nonsense down your throat? Can you point me to where on this screen players are allowed to disable the preferred pronouns option? You know, if you're going to make claims like this, the least you could do is, I don't know, back them up. Oh, there's also this part from the ending credits where he compares being asked to select pronouns, I guess, to Socrates drinking hemlock. I don't even have a response to that other than, I think you're being a tad overdramatic personally. Jeez, I don't know Ephraim, the high rate of suicide among transgender people, even the ones who receive gender affirming care and live in a society that generally accepts their identity, would suggest that Razor Fist is being appropriately dramatic. This has been debunked numerous times, but you know what, fine, I'll debunk it again. Alex's source for this claim is this Heritage Foundation article, which cites back to this study, which to be very brief, doesn't actually say what Alex thinks it does. The study even specifically notes that both gender-affirming healthcare and affirming societal attitudes are beneficial to the lives of transgender people in notable ways. Yeah, this study has been debunked numerous times, which is why the excerpts of the study that Ephraim cites doesn't even debunk the statistics provided by the study that I showcased in my video. Let's go back to the figures that I cited. Quote, the most thorough follow-up of sex reassigned people extending over 30 years and conducted in Sweden where the culture is strongly supportive of the transgendered documents their lifelong mental unrest. 10 to 15 years 
after surgical reassignment, the suicide rate of those who had undergone sex reassignment surgery rose to 20 times that of comparable peers. So, according to this study, Transgender people who get sex reassignment surgery are 20 times more likely to kill themselves than any other group of people. How does saying that sex reassignment surgery and transgender affirming societal attitudes are beneficial to the morbidity and mortality rate, as Ephraim just claimed, debunk the statistic of trans people's suicide rate being 20 times higher than any other group suicide rate. And also, beneficial in what way? What do you even mean by beneficial? The study was even done in Sweden, which is generally a left-leaning, pro-trans country. What better conditions do you want a study like this to be conducted in? Again, even if we read the excerpts of the study that Ephraim himself provides, neither of them debunk the suicide rate statistic. At most, they say that the statistic can't be used to infer that sex reassignment surgery and transgender affirming societal attitudes aren't helpful to lowering the suicide rate of transgender people. But it doesn't even provide an explanation for why one cannot make that inference. Oh wait, I'm sorry. It does start to do that, but Ephraim cuts the explanation off in the screenshot he uses. Jeez, thanks for that one, faggot. It's not like actually having an explanation for why this study is bunk would be helpful to understanding why I was wrong or anything. Guess I'll just have to look at the study for myself. The first thing I would like to note is that these particular excerpts Ephraim cited are from the discussion section of the study, meaning none of this is about refuting the data itself, but rather is just conjecture about what the data means and how we should interpret it. In other words, none of this actually debunks the suicide rate statistic. And remember, Ephraim claimed that this entire study has been debunked. This has been debunked numerous times, but you know what? Fine, I'll debunk it again. You wanna know what I hear when somebody says this study has been debunked numerous times? I hear the statistics presented by this study were gathered through fraudulent means such as poor and or biased methodology. Not the statistics presented by this study have been debunked because I have a different interpretation of what they mean that is backed up by this claim that I am presenting no evidence for. Which is that gender reassignment surgery and gender affirming societal attitudes are beneficial to decreasing the suicide rate among trans people. That's essentially what Ephraim's saying. He's saying that this study has been debunked because he has a different interpretation of it that is fueled by a claim that he doesn't cite any evidence for. Anyways, let's continue reading the excerpt. Quote, As an analogy, similar studies have found increased somatic morbidity, suicide rate, and overall mortality for patients treated for bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. This is important information, but it does not follow that mood stabilizing treatment or antipsychotic treatment is the culprit. Well, here's the thing. First of all, the study in question was done in Sweden, so even if we go by the logic that both sex reassignment surgery and gender affirming societal attitudes are beneficial to decreasing the suicide rate among trans people, the fact that the suicide rate among them remains high even in a society that provides both of those things would at the very least suggest that that's only a hypothesis, not an absolute truth. Secondly, the writer seems to be suggesting that 
only sex reassignment surgery and gender-affirming societal attitudes should be used to alleviate people suffering with gender dysphoria, and doesn't give any credence to the idea that we should, I don't know, help them come to terms with the reality of their biology with proper mental health treatment instead of chemically and physically castrating them and enabling their delusions? Last, but certainly not least, at the very beginning of the study, the conclusion reads, quote, Our findings suggest that sex reassignment, although alleviating gender dysphoria, may not suffice as treatment for transsexualism, and should inspire improved psychiatric and somatic care after sex reassignment for this patient group. What was that about the study not saying what I thought it said, Ephraim? Because it sounds to me like it's saying exactly what I thought it said. Oops. Of course, this doesn't even make any sense to bring up, given what's the implication supposed to be here? That having non-binary options in a video game is going to turn somebody transgender? Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. The preferred pronouns option in Starfield's character creator isn't the only means by which this is being done, but the next generation of humans are being groomed to come out as transgender. Their societal indoctrination by way of grade school curriculums and educational programming, some of which Akumu already went through in his video asking what is woke. Calling people transphobic for simply disagreeing with you and the notion that men can be women and women can be men, uh, pushing for men to compete with women just because they think they're women. How about that Netflix show that's targeted for kids, Ridley Jones, where they have a baby cow identify as non-binary? If I'm going to lead the herd, I want to do it as myself. After all, you always say to lead with your heart, right? Well, my heart says that the way I feel most myself is to go by the name Fred. That's because I'm non-binary, and Fred is the name that fits me best. And I also use they and them, because calling me a she or a he doesn't feel right to me. Oh, I didn't know that. No wonder you've been struggling. How could you lead the herd without being yourself? Oh, I'm sorry I used the wrong name and pronouns. Thank you for showing me your heart. How about another example? Another TV show targeted for children, Transformers Earthspark, where they have an Autobot identify as non-binary. Morgan, can you switch, uh... Nightshade's pronouns are they, them. He or she just doesn't fit who I am. Not today. <laughs> I can keep going on and on about transgenderism and race in regards to being woke. I could go over the fact that they're pushing gender identity theory onto elementary schoolers, onto the next generation and teaching gender identity theory as a fact in the school curriculum. Several curriculums during Pride Month have been leaked. Not only that, but there's hundreds of videos on the internet of teachers proudly admitting and professing that they're pushing gender identity theory onto their students.
there is a video of him as a toddler. So he uh, was assigned female at birth. There's a video of him as a toddler tearing barrettes out of then her hair and throwing them on the ground and sobbing. That's a gender message. And when it happens not just once or twice or three times, that's a gender message. As well as the censorship slash jailing of anybody who disagrees with modern gender ideology. Or at least, as many people as the left can get away with. Some of these instances having been covered by people who have spent far longer fighting this lunacy than I have. This Idaho student was prevented from walking at graduation after asserting that men and women are different. Guys and guys and girls are girls. There is no in between. At Walsh's anti-groomer documentary, What is a Woman? was greenlit to broadcast for free on Twitter last Thursday when various Twitter executives deemed the documentary hate speech and completely suppressed it. Elon Musk himself, the CEO of Twitter, had to intervene, which in turn caused him to promote the film heartily. At San Francisco State University, the inmates are running the asylum. Riley Gaines is a female professional swimmer who has been very outspoken against transgender participation in women's sports and was assaulted multiple times yesterday at this University of Make Believe on account of not wanting men cheating women out of their sports titles. <laughs> At one point, she was barred from leaving the building, held hostage, while the mob demanded money to let her leave. From the Daily Wire, it says, On Tuesday, the father of a biological girl who believes she's a boy turned himself into a Canadian court and was subsequently taken to jail after the Attorney General of British Columbia issued an arrest warrant for contempt after the father had insisted on referring to his daughter as his daughter and used the pronouns she and her. God forbid. Robert Hoogland from... Um, Surrey, British Columbia, has a 14-year-old daughter. In February 2019, the Supreme Court of British Columbia ordered that the girl receive testosterone injections without obtaining parental consent. The Federalist notes that the court also declared that if either of her parents referred to her using female pronouns or addressed her by her birth name, they would be considered guilty of family violence. When she was in seventh grade, the girl's uh, school urged the girl to see psychologist Dr. Wallace Wong, who recommended the girl should begin taking cross-sex hormones at 13. Hoogland cited his daughter's alleged history of mental health issues and refused to give permission. Doctors at uh, BC Children's Hospital decided that the girl should receive testosterone injections. And, um, and now, fast forward a little bit, Legally, he's not even allowed to refer to his, his own daughter as a daughter, as a girl. He's arrested for that. Now, this type of stuff isn't going to affect everyone, but to say that none of this will have an effect on whether or not children come out as trans is borderline insane. You can state all of these facts in a silly inflection all you want, but that doesn't make them any less factual. I would like to conclude this argument by pointing out that Ephraim doesn't actually explain why it didn't make any sense for me to bring up the original point I made. He just says that it didn't make any sense to bring up and then asks what the implication of it is supposed to be, which is not an argument. I'm going to need a citation for that, Alex! Considering that you failed to prove that the study I cited didn't say what I thought it did, as well as the fact that you've spent most of this video misconstruing my arguments, putting words in my mouth, constructing absurd standards to avoid having to admit you were wrong about anything, and outright lying not just about my points, but about the points you made in your original commentary on Razorfist. I'm going to respond to this request with a fuck you, I owe you nothing. Anyway, that's all I want to cover, so final thoughts? This video was just frustrating all around. Damn it, Ephraim, stop stealing what I was going to say about your video. Alex really didn't understand the vast majority of points that I was making or why I said things the way I did in my commentary. Look who's talking. Instead, expecting me to do things in a rather specific way that just wouldn't have benefited the video. My god, the projection is off the charts with these final thoughts. All while using utterly ridiculous logic and making some rather basic errors. Ah yes, such utterly ridiculous logic as 
I can't further a conversation about our disagreement on a topic if I don't even know why you disagree with me about the topic. And basic errors such as providing evidence that backs up the points I'm making. Truly, my video could have only been made by an utter idiot. Normally, I would go right into my own final thoughts on this video, but unfortunately, we aren't quite finished yet. Yes, even though this commentary is already two hours long, we're only halfway done with it. With that said, I'm Alex the Critic, and join me in part two as I put an end to this drama by covering my other target, whose video is, uh, 30 minutes long. Ugh, why did I choose to do this to myself?